Hello, everybody. Welcome into Backseat Drivers. I'm Alex Weaver with Jonathan Merriman here with Noah Gregson, who is our driver for this week. Kyle Larson snapped a 75 race winless streak. He gets it done. Dover 42. Yeah, I told you guys last week. She Did was you asking though? me. She was asking me, "Oh, who are you worried about?" I'm like, "Can't you can't really worry about anybody. We're down to 12 drivers in the Cup Series. Anybody can win any given Sunday. I'm going to take that as Kyle Larson proving me right." What did you think of that win? I, I watched every single lap. That's probably the first cup race this year. I've watched every single lap, beginning to end, and it was big interesting. Big Dover guy, huh? Big, big Dover <laughs> guy, yeah. Um, but I thought it was interesting, Logano having issues, mm -hmm. and then Chase blowing up there at the beginning, what, nine, nine ten laps in? So yep. there's a lot of, uh, kind of crazy stuff going on for the start of the round. Yeah, I thought it was going to be the 11th day. He had, I felt like, the strongest car pretty much the whole entire race. Started from the pole. Larson was talking a little bit of trash, and then all of a sudden the 42 just takes over speed, and it's his day to dominate. Yeah, it was just, it, it was really interesting in, in that way. I don't know what changed with Denny's car, if anything changed. It looked like Larson had speed out of the gate there for the first, you know, first two stages, mm -hmm. but – the I mean we ended on a, on a fairly long run and, and Larson just nobody yeah, was going to touch him. Uh, Truex was coming, but with lap traffic, you don't know how much that played in. But I don't know what changed with Larson's car, but that thing took off there at the end. All right, well Noah brought it up too. The 22 before the green flag even dropped had mechanical issues. The nine I think on lap seven through ten had problems. His engine blew up. The 12 was complaining of engine failure. Denny at one point in the 11 was complaining of his engine going bad. So how crazy. Is that going to make Talladega? You now have two drivers, possibly three with the 12, who are going into Talladega thinking that they're must-wins. Yeah, one of those guys is the best super speedway racer, you know, on the series. It's a toss-up between Joey and Brad, I feel like. I don't think Joey needs to worry. I think the nine – At all. No. Nah, I mean, he's, he's – He's so good there, and he's been so good on the super speedways. I don't think he needs to worry. If I'm the nine, though, I don't know. How do you feel about Chase Elliott? If, I oh, mean, no. This it was shifts. your champ for well, – we talked about yeah, the nine you, making it the Homestead, done deal. Yeah, but sure you can't thing. foresee somebody blowing up like ten I'm laps into the race. I'm like you. you can get caught up in something quick at Dega and Kansas. I mean, he's already behind the eight ball. He's only got two races left to do it. I think the biggest thing is you can't dig yourself a hole yeah. during that first race of the round. And the round of 16, you kind of weed some of those guys out that you know you can beat. But when you get down to the round of 12, the round of 8, that's where it starts to become very, very difficult. And so those top eight guys, I mean, they're all fighting for those eight spots. So I don't think they're sleeping very well at night, <laughs> uh, knowing that they have to go to Talladega. And, I mean, Joey Logano said at, at Dover in his press conference that – you have a 50% chance of finishing that race. So I don't know if he's sleeping well, but it could be worse for him. You're the 22. Are you worried? Yeah. yeah. You're damn right I'm, <laughs> I'm worried because, I mean, that place is so challenging. You, you get caught up in somebody else's mess throughout the day, and it ruins your, your championship run. I mean, he's the defending champion, not knowing if he's going to make yep. it into the, the round of eight. And luckily he has stage points and all those bonus points that he's – accumulated throughout the year but it's still not comfortable in my opinion if there's one driver that you're now worried about pick one because last week you picked none of them i don't it has to be the nine even more so than the 12 or some of the guys that are just way heavy in point deficit. i mean yeah i mean the 12 you can make an argument for but man i mean what do you do you blow up 10 laps into the race you're literally sitting there watching everybody else go around in circles when you're parked. You can't do anything. I think he was already on the plane. Yeah, but, I mean, you just – I mean, that's a helpless feeling. At least if you're the 12, like, you had an opportunity to go out there and race. And his car was okay. He had top 10 speed most of the day. Yeah, he was running but, eight when yeah. he pulled off. All right, what about you? You're one driver in the round of 12. Who are you worried about? I'm worried more for for Blaney or for Chase because they don't have all those, those stage points. I, I have to look at the numbers and everything, yeah. but – I mean, Chase is a good super speedway racer, but like I said, you can't you can't rely Bang on yeah. your past history there. I mean, Brad's good, Joey's good there, but I don't know. It's it's challenging racing there. You can get caught up in someone else's mess, and I think luckily Joey has those bonus points, but I don't see that for the other team. 
Well, we're getting closer and closer to Homestead now. And Maryman, let's go through your champ four prediction just so Noah can hear how wrong you are. I mean, it changes all the time. But <laughs> Literally so, every week. So before Dover, I had Chase penciled in. I had the 18, I had the 11, and I had the four. I think that was More it. Than, yeah, because I think you had the 19 out. Yeah, I had the 19 out, which was dumb before the playoffs started. But, you know, hot size 2020, right? So I had the 22, the 19, the 18, and the 11. The 22, 19, and 18. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Who do you got? You, Let's pick your champ for. I think you have to take your th- your three guys at Gibbs. I mean, they just have – they have All so three. many of those bonus yeah, points. I mean – Going through the playoffs, we got a lot of bonus points last year in in the truck series, and I knew how valuable that was Mm -hmm. throughout the playoffs that you can kind of have a cushion. So I think you got to take those those three guys, Denny, Kyle, Martin Truex, but the the question mark really in in Cup and Xfinity Series is who's going to be that fourth guy uh, when you get to Homestead. So uh, I'm going to take Harvick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All I know is Larson threw a huge wrench. He did. He threw a huge wrench. Larson is going to be – if he can get to Homestead, we'll be tough to deal with. I think this next round – I think this next round is going to be really tough on Larson. He hates Martinsville. And he, he does. Not he even good. said that in victory lane yesterday. But Texas and Phoenix, it's a toss-up. He's been good at Phoenix before, but I yeah. don't I don't see Texas as a track where he's going to go out and get a win. Right. And your, – your key <laughs> advice to him was what? I don't know. You Stay tell me. Stay off the record. Yeah, yeah. Keep it <laughs> off the hook. So, but with Martinsville, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could, you could not hit anything there and finish however many laps down. Yeah, it's a tough place. Well, let's look at your season and the Xfinity Series season as a whole. There's been three guys that have dominated mm-hmm. pretty much the whole entire season, but you now have made it into the round of eight along with three of your JRM guys. So, talk about the team atmosphere. What that been? What that has been like dealing with Justin Allgaier and Michael Annette. And how you guys feel about this well, next round? Well, it's funny that we're talking about that because last night Michael and I were hanging out. We got <laughs> some dinner, and like we're we're all pretty close, myself, Justin, Michael, and so we were talking last night between Michael and I, and he's like, I th- I don't think we need to isolate ourselves from each other. We need to keep on doing the same thing to hopefully get one of us to advance into the round of four. It's going to be a challenging challenging set of tracks coming up. Um, I think we have a lot of speed, but. But those top three guys are good. So we're fighting to get into the next round. We need to put some pressure on those guys. But I don't think we need to do anything different. I think we need to continue to work hard as teammates and race each other hard, but but race each other with respect and Mm -hmm. and try and help each other off the track. How do you beat the big three? (laughs) Wreck them. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Uh, They're they're challenging. They're, They're beatable. I think they are very focused right now. Um, we can see the Roval. We can see this past weekend at Dover. I mm-hmm. mean, the 20 had problems, the two had pro- problems. So they're very focused on just going out there and winning the race yeah. because they feel like they can bank and they feel comfortable with all those bonus points they've got throughout the r- regular season. So with that being said, I think we can pressure them into maybe making mistakes. We saw the two do it. He hit the wall first lap. The 20 got damaged, and he wasn't uh, running where he normally would be. So. With that being said, I felt like we had a really good shot to win the race um, at Dover this past weekend, and the team were building a good amount of speed at the right time right now. So I'm really happy with where we are on the nine team right now. I feel like the nine team last year also kind of laid the groundwork for kind of what you know your your teams over at JRM have to do anyways. I mean, where was Tyler last year other than Daytona? I mean, he just kind of crept up in there and then even when he got to homestead it was like the Ryan we were like oh cole custer definitely it's gonna be cole custer's race to lose at homestead he's gonna and he went out there and won the thing mm-hmm. so how much do you look at that last year how much is is that a lesson to just keep your head down i think it's i think it's big and i kind of struggled with <laughs> it during the middle of the year until i really i was going through some challenges and i asked dale jr to go to lunch with me and so i could pick his mind and I'm sure he's been through some challenges and struggles throughout his life and with his car- racing career. So I, I wanted to ask him just questions on, on how I could be more positive. And he kind of gave me the overview of everything, the big picture, which I was just really narrowly focused. But uh, that really helped with my confidence. And he said, look, man, they're going to give you everything they can in the playoffs. And I feel like we're peaking at the right time. 
we're gaining more and more speed. We've had a lot of speed this last three weeks. And so Dave Ellens, he knows how to get it mm -hmm. done with a, a rookie driver. I put full belief in them and my team. And so I'm really excited for what's to come. We're focused on what we need to do. And the first round, the round of 12, we needed to finish top eight every single race. Now it gets a little bit more challenging. We need to go finish top five, hopefully to advance into the, the round of four. Well, Merriman over here is your biggest fan on the preview show. He's picked I do pick you a lot. A I, th lot. I mean, I think you do. And <laughs> you guys hear that? <laughs> but, but so two things impressed me. The fact that the Roval backup car was the first backup car you've ever had to go to in your National Series career. I thought that was unbelievable. I don't know why. Um, and B – when we Bring went when we when we went through the month of August and maybe a little bit in September, maybe a little bit late July, I mean you were finishing top ten, top five races with cars that looked like they were pulled out of the junkyard. Uh, what is the secret behind A, you know, not having to go to backup cars ever or just, you know, keeping that primary clean? And how are you guys able to, to salvage efforts with, with cars that I mean are pretty dinged up, you know? throughout that stretch well, i think a big part of it is, is not wrecking so you can take the cars you have and, and regroup and, and come back better to the racetrack obviously we've kind of torn them up and i've got damage throughout the race and it looks pretty cool when you're able to finish top five with a car missing fenders and <laughs> back bumper and looks like it yeah it's been sitting in a junkyard for 10 years so uh, just not really giving up and, and never quitting is is the main focus i was talking to my good buddy Leighton the other day and he was saying that I'm the only driver in the Xfinity series that's finished every race this year and I think I've completed every lap except for like three or four I blew like a right front tire earlier wow. in the year at Dover um, and finished like two laps down or something so um, that has been one of my goals this year is to, to complete every lap and to finish all these races we've had a good amount of speed and the second half of the year has gone a lot better I've been able to learn and just kind of see the trends of how the Xfinity cars drive. I had to change up my driving style a lot from going from the trucks to, to driving the cars now, the Xfinity cars. So I feel like we're getting better as a team. Everything is, is kind of firing on all cylinders right now, and, and we're still improving. So never quitting is the key to, uh, to finishing these races. You guys have an off week this week, and the next step for you is Kansas. You started from the pole there and won in the truck series. So how do you feel about heading to Kansas which might be one of your best tracks. Yeah, I, I like that track a lot. I don't know how it's going to be in the Xfinity car, but um, I had some some success. I was able to beat Kyle Busch there last year. Uh, we pretty no much biggie. dominated that race. So <laughs> that, that was one of the, the bigger ones for me, just the way we were able to do it. And I think we led like 114 of the 137 laps. So it was a really, really good day. We had a really good truck that day, but I like that track. It's I think the race in Xfinity cars is going to move right up against the wall. So that'll be good practice. I've, I've had some practice at Las Vegas earlier this year, Chicago, mm -hmm. Darlington, places where you get right up against that wall. And we did a two-day test down in Homestead. So that'll be good practice for when we get to Homestead. And I'm excited to get to Kansas. It's, it's a really fun racetrack. Relieved you don't have to go to Talladega? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to go down there and hang out, but I'm going back to, to Vegas to run a late model race this weekend um, with my personal late model. So I've been racing – 26 weeks in a row now. I was going to have an off weekend. I'm like, now nah, we'll do we'll do another race. So it'll be 28 weeks in a row, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Well, don't worry, because Merriman over here will pick you Kansas yeah, week, I'm sure. sure. There you go, <laughs> Kansas, mark it down. All right, well, now you're actually going to stick around and reveal the top 20 most popular driver in Cup. Um, so this is the first ever look at these. So you're getting – It's in, in order? alphabetical order. Alpha is how we're yeah, going to announce these. I knew that wasn't these. right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's announce the top 20 for the most popular driver presented by Hooters. These are in alphabetical order again, so they are not in how they are ranked currently. Uh, Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, William Byron, Matt Benedetto, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Eric Jones – Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Ryan Newman, Ryan Priest, Daniel Suarez, Martin Truex Jr., and Bubba Wallace. Now, you can keep logging on to NASCAR.com slash Most Popular Driver and vote daily for your driver to win. Votes shared on Facebook and Twitter count double. Voting closes December 4th, and this year's Most Popular Driver will be announced on December 5th. You won this in the Truck Series last year. Yep. You are on social a lot promoting Most Popular Driver, or at least giving love to people that vote for you for Most Popular Driver. What does this mean for you guys to win Most Popular Driver? Well, I think it means 
probably m more to the fans because, I mean, without them, really, we don't have a sport. So it's really cool for, for my fans to get on there and vote and everything, and, and I take a lot of pride in thinking that we can win it, not just myself, but I think the fans win it, um, most of, importantly. So it's, it's cool. Um, I haven't got very many trophies this year, so make sure to vote for me because <laughs> uh, maybe I can get a trophy um, this year for the most popular driver. <laughs> we got one last year. It's, it's in my kitchen, so maybe you can have a twin to it, um, but for the Xfinity. So. Yeah, you can get so one in a new vote. series. Make sure to vote for me. Yeah, keep voting. All right. Have you voted? I have voted. Me? No, I'm not allowed to vote. No, we can't vote. She <laughs> voted. She <laughs> voted. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in my ment I mentally vote. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. So now we're going to do a segment. This is new for backseat drivers, but because we're bringing you on, we are doing a new segment called Oh Noah. Oh Noah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so That's the first thing I thought. Oh Noah. <laughs> we're going to watch um, some clips, and this is basically like you had one job, but Oh Noah. Like, oh Noah. Okay. So this first one, obviously, we had to bring up the nine car at the Roval. This ha I mean, it's kind of easy to do this, right? So this, yes, it is very easy. So this is the, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. <laughs> he hit the wall, and he's already got it in reverse going <laughs> yeah, backwards. Like, how do, how do you do that? that? Like, I'd be sitting there for a couple, couple minutes trying to get it in reverse and stuff. But that was, uh, I don't know, I think that lit a fire it under did. his butt for the rest of the race because he came through the field I mean, really won, quickly. So. But it's, it's very easy to do there on restarts because you come off the, the last chicane, and you're in second gear um, climbing RPM, but when you're on restarts, you're in the restart zone, so you're rolling faster. There's like the and oh so you get up no to third moment. gear. <laughs> so you're faster on restarts there than you are. Uh huh. So you on the take lap. your normal braking approach, but you're going probably 20, 30 miles an hour faster, and yeah, that's it's not very good. But he's he's lucky he came back and won the race because. Yeah. That could have been very, very and bad then the mistake. The burnout know? at the same spot was pretty that, cool. That was awesome. And then he stood up on the door, went backwards. I thought that was that was pretty cool. So. All right. Next up, we have your very first interview. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> which was in the K&N series. Here with Noah Gregson, third place finisher in your K&N West debut. Talk about the pass you had to make around the six car. You were battling with him for quite a while. Yeah, no. Uh, all the guys at Jefferson Pitts Racing gave me a really good piece. Can't thank them enough. I saved my tires till the end, and we got around them, and we're moving up. Got got into third, and just got that last restart, and couldn't get by the 17. But overall, it was a really good day, and I can't thank everyone from Alert ID, Colliers International, my mom and dad, and everyone who supports me. Well, I look like <laughs> I look like a deer in headlights. <laughs> um, not not very good. Um, that's young Noah. I didn't know where to look. This one. <laughs> I mean, this is my first race ever. I've never done an interview before. I, I'm third I place, man. Congrats. Third place. Heck yeah. I I didn't know what I was doing. I'm I like, I mean, uh, you're staring <laughs> down the camera. Uh, you I look a little thank, scared. I want to thank my mom and and my dad and everyone and yeah. Yeah, not good. Um, so we're next up. We're gonna go. Is that, is that first date, Noah? Uh, no, I got more game than that. <laughs> right, Alex? Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not yet. And then, but then you have to wait for the thumbs up that we give because it comes at the very end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn! I just killed that thing. Really like, that was excited. good. All right. No. Next, we have. I'm not sure what the next one is, but we'll roll it. Oh, this is you mm, uh, awesome. puking at Martinsville. Yep. So dominate the race. Martinsville is a tough track anyways, but then boss man comes over, just wants to give well, you a little handshake, and it's straight <laughs> <laughs> throw up. So, <laughs> so this happens to me whenever I win because, like, I get out of the Well, the you have car, the photographers, the like, right in your face. Yeah, it's like, a funny he's like, photo. He's like, do it again, do it again. They all are taking pictures of you throwing up, which I think is nasty. I think it's pretty funny. I mean – do you have that framed in your house? I don't, but there's a you picture. Should. I was looking at this morning, actually, of Kyle, and he has his hand on my back right here. I, I'm like, oh, I need to get my helmet off because I just climbed up the fence. If the picture happens right right about now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect timing and everything. I mean, look at these fans. I mean, They're yeah. watching me just throw You're up. I look like a, a young all girl. All kinds of photos, but you won. Up. I, di I did one. So I climbed up the fence. I got down. I still had my helmet on. I 
It was, I mean, luckily it was all water that came out of my mouth. Were like, you just dehydrated? Was that the throw? No, like I spiked my heart rate when I climbed up the fence. I'm pumping up the fans. I get down. I'm really hot. I got the helmet on. I'm breathing hard. And then, like, I, the adrenaline wears <laughs> off and I'm worn out. And I'm so like, it's oh, man. not as easy as Tony Stewart makes it look. Yeah, not as easy. Yeah. I, I've realized that I need to take my time, but it still <laughs> happens that I throw up. So. All right, so the final video we have is Merriman's favorite video, probably arms, of all time. Arms, arms, yeah, get Morgan it, Morgan. Shepherd in Richmond. He uh, is just doing a little, little showing off, and get ready for it because it's well. Here's his problem: he didn't, he didn't, he didn't wait for Elgin to come sweep Pit Road. <laughs> ooh, ooh, getting jiggy. And here's oh. a rock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth to the concrete. <laughs> These are our uh, favorite Oh Noah moments, so we had to uh, oh include man. you in some of them. I mean, but this part right here is fabulous. It Look is. at that. Look at the Arms twist. Going. I mean, he's doing Both figure of you skating guys on wish that y'all could do pit road. That. I mean, do you know how old Morgan Shepard is no. in that clip? No. I, I mean, not. he's probably in his upper 60s there. No, he's How not. old is he now? He's, I don't know, he's oh, 70s. Such a hard he day. might, uh, is he pushing 80? I don't know. But, I mean. He carries his age great. He, he I mean. Me. Well, that's so what roller skating will do for you, man. That's right. Would Keep you rather you go through your very first interview on national TV all over again or fall on roller skates on pit road on national hmm. TV? I felt like my dip dot self would <laughs> pull off the roller skates pretty good. Are you more of a blade guy or a roller skate guy? I, I'm a blade guy, yeah, you know? I figured. Yeah. Yeah, I got a nice set at home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> cool. you know, we should start. We should start roller skating. That'd be right. fun. Well, Kansas. We yeah, better see you on some roller yeah. skates. Roller All three blades. of us. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you being here. Don't miss the action coming up from Talladega. It's going to be a crazy one for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. It's coming Sunday at 2 p.m. on NBC. We'll see you guys right back here on another edition of Backseat Drivers.